Today we're going to talk about what kind of beans you should use for espresso. Should you use dark or light roast or single origin or blends? All those things we're going to cover today, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Elsa from The Coffee Chronicler. I'm a Q grader and coffee writer and it's my goal to help you brew really good coffee at home. Today we're going to talk about espresso. More specifically, we're going to talk about the beans that you can use for espresso. Espresso is special. Many of the things that we take as self-evident truths in other areas of coffee aren't really applicable here. To understand why espresso is so special, first we have to look at the concentration. For that reason, I've brought these two cups to illustrate the huge difference between, for example, something like pour over and espresso. As you can tell, one cup is a lot smaller than the other. Typically, espresso is brewed at a 1 to 2 ratio, whereas a pour over coffee can be brewed at anything from 1 to 15 to 1 to 18. The amount of total dissolved solids is 8 to 12 percent in espresso, and in pour over coffee it's usually around 1.2 to 1.3. So espresso is often 8 to 10 times stronger than pour over. The time that it takes to brew these two kinds of coffee is also very different. According to the ancient prescriptions, espresso is brewed under pressure and it should take around 30 seconds to pull a shot. Pour over coffee on the other hand takes a lot longer. Typically it will be something like 3 to 4 minutes. Another key difference between these two kinds of coffee is that espresso is often the base of a milk drink. Now in front of me I have some quite dark roast coffee that would be ideal to use for espresso. If I were to brew this in an AeroPress or pour over, it would be probably kind of boring. The cup would lack structure, there wouldn't be any perceptible acidity and it would probably taste kind of ashy and a little bit roasty. However, when they're brewed at that much more intense espresso ratio, the acidity is just right, the sweetness really comes out and uh, overall the balance is just a lot better. So this kind of goes to show that the rules are pretty different when it comes to espresso. Now next up we have a medium roast. This bean works well as an espresso. You will probably have to grind finer and adjust the water temperature to get a little bit more sweetness out of the, the coffee. And you can also drink it as a pour over French press and it will still taste good. If we go back just 10 or 20 years, it wasn't that common to use a coffee roasted this light for espresso, but today it's getting more and more popular. Now, this bean here is a light roast Ethiopian coffee. This is the kind of coffee that all modern specialty coffee geeks are crazy about. It has a very floral and fruity aroma and tastes really good as a V60. However, if you were to try and brew this as an espresso, it would just be horrible. It would probably taste like straight lemon juice or even battery acid. Coffee that is roasted this light isn't very soluble, which makes it very difficult to extract the sweetness of the cup. The first compounds that are extracted when you brew coffee are the acids. And since espresso is just brewed in 30 seconds, it doesn't extract that much sweetness. So if you try to brew ultra light roasts, then you don't get very sweet cups, you tend to get a lot of acid. You might meet some roasters who will tell you that this is how espresso is supposed to taste, but mm, trust me, it's not. Let's talk a little bit about what I call the espresso paradox. Now the Ethiopian beans I have here are grown under very specific circumstances and that's what gives them the unique flavor. So when it comes to specialty coffee, we typically value coffee that is grown at a higher altitude because that results in a more dense bean and more flavor. This flavor is very easy to appreciate when you brew it at a 1 to 15, 1 to 16 ratio. It's easy to taste in cupping, pour over, aeropress, all these kind of standard brewing methods. When it comes to espresso, it's like all these characteristics are less important. As we mentioned before, espresso is typically 8 to 10 times stronger, more concentrated than normal coffee. So you don't need that much acidity, you don't need that much floral character, because the brewing method will amplify it all. So in that sense you can actually get away with using what is normally considered lower quality coffee in espresso. So it's kind of interesting that we have a lot of rules that we tend to follow when it comes to specialty coffee. We care a lot about single origin coffee and special lots. When it comes to espresso, a lot of these things aren't that important. So for instance, lower altitude coffees are more common, blends are a lot more common. 
So I think it's interesting that this brewing method somehow improves coffees that are seen as inferior, lower scoring coffees, and it tends to mute the interesting characteristics of the really good coffees. This is especially a paradox because espresso equipment is so expensive, it can be 100 times more expensive than regular coffee gear. Blends have been a part of the espresso almost since the beginning. This is just the tradition, this is how coffee started. Before specialty coffee started, there wasn't really that much interest in single origin, and blends offer some advantages for the companies, but also for the customers. For instance, if you have a cheap, low-altitude Brazilian coffee, you can mix in a little bit of Robusta to add some crema and some caffeine, and you can add a little bit of a high-altitude Colombian coffee to give it a little bit of that acidity. That way you can keep the price of the coffee down and you can have a consistent flavor of your brand from year to year. I've been drinking this particular blend for a couple of weeks and been enjoying it, even though it's a little bit on the dark side. You can see that this coffee here is almost shining, it has some Robusta blended in as well, and if I were to drink this as regular coffee it would just be horrible. But as an espresso, at that super concentrated ratio, again it completely changes the game and I quite enjoy it. And I can tell you, if you wanted to make a cappuccino or latte with this, it would also work perfect. So what kind of coffee beans are the best for espresso? Well, I think it's up to personal taste. But I will have to say that a lot of the rules that we normally talk about when it comes to coffee, they don't really apply to espresso. Personally, I wouldn't roast my expensive beans from Panama for espresso, for example. I would probably just use a cheaper Brazilian coffee. But what do you think? Do you have any favorite roasters or brands? Let me know down in the comment section. If you like this video, then hit the thumbs up. And if you want more content like this, then consider subscribing. And I'll see you soon in another video.